I'm always interested in what other macro shooters take with them into the field. How much and uh, how do they carry it? Uh, so with that in mind, I'm going to just kind of go through what I take with me when I go out shooting. First of all, like many photographers, I have too many gear bags. Most are, are pipe dreams that cost me a lot of money and somehow didn't do the trick or only did it for a short while. I have a small closet full of bags, like I have ones with wheels that go on airplanes and ones that go on my back or on my hip over my shoulder and even wishful thinking, teeny weeny bags that can carry almost nothing. I also have large rock concert style hard cases if I need them, but I haven't lately. Then I have the one bag that I actually use. It costs less than 20 bucks and filled with my stuff weighs about three pounds. It's an over the shoulder bag and I wear it fairly high up. I hardly notice it when I'm in the field. In fact, here's a photo of my standard bag. Um, it's only 10 by 10 inches square and it has one large main pocket within which is a single zippered small pocket for small stuff like cell phone or whatever. Um, actually, it's, it's kind of a very small version of what's called a messenger bag. On the back and in the front are two more large, very thin or narrow pockets where I carry my diffusers. By adjusting the over-the-shoulder strap higher, the kit is not so low that it has to bang on my hip all the time, making me always aware of it. By wearing it up a bit, a little higher, I can feel, I can still feel it, but it kind of hugs my back, which is where, where I wear it and I like it. Since I do need to have things with me when I shoot, this is not a bad compromise. Now, something I don't carry in a bag, but I carry with me, uh, I carry one camera, which right now is the Nikon D800E if I'm shooting real stacked images usually with two 32 gigabyte cards in it. I've never filled them all up. I usually carry a Gitzo GT3531S carbon fiber tripod. It weighs 3.7 pounds. And on top of that is an, a really right stuff BH55 PCL ball head with a Swiss Swiss Arca type panning clamp. This thing weighs about two pounds. The Nikon D800E weighs 2.2 pounds and my much loved uh, Voigtlander 125 APO Lancer lens, macro lens, weighs 1.7 pounds. So anyway, my tripod with ball and panoramic head weighs 5.7 pounds. So the total weight with lens, camera, tripod, and head weigh about um, 9.65 pounds. And if you add my camera bag, which is about three pounds loaded, I have 12.65 pounds or 5.74 kilograms. Anyway, that's what I cart around. Here's a shot. Uh, um, with everything in my bag kind of laid out so you can see it. I'll, I'll kind of go through and name each item and try to explain why it's there. So it could be fun. I carry a 22 inch foldable collapsible translucent diffuser. Just a just a regular one that you can buy anywhere. And I use this only in bright sun and I don't use it very often. But what I do carry is a uh, homemade 22 inch gauze diffuser, one that I've bought a commercial one, cut out the middle and put some very thin fabric there. And, and I use this just all the time. It's not as opaque as the commercial ones. It lets a lot of light through, but it'll just cut out the specular highlights or just kind of soften that, the bright light. Uh, this, I, you know, this I sometimes just carry in my pocket uh, without, you know, I stuff it in my pocket. When it comes out, it expands and then I stuff it back in. Now something I, I do carry is what's called a flower pod. It's a tiny expandable tripod with a short arm. 
Here in Michigan, which is so flat, I'm completely wind dependent. Uh, if I can invent such a word. The flower pot allows me to hold a flower or leaf still enough to stack photos. Or I can use it to hold a small diffuser. And I, I carry with me also a longer flower pod extension arm that I built myself to give it greater extension. Uh, and sometimes I take along two flower pods in the bag if I'm really fancy, including a flower pod ground spike. In the little pocket in my bag, I always carry an Allen wrench, any extra flashcards that I want, and a quarter to act as a screwdriver. You know, the worst thing that can happen is that you're way out somewhere in the field, miles from your car, and your L bracket comes loose. And you need that little tiny Allen wrench and you don't have it, so I always have it. I tend to carry with me a couple of extra clamps. Uh, and the ones that I like are these needle nose plastic clamps that have a uh, a big reach so they can grab over you know over a branch and then clamp something on the other side of it so these are just uh, my go-to clamps for everything I've got dozens and dozens of them but I carry a few with me one thing I carry is a shower cap just the kind you can get at Kmart or Walmart um, in case it rains that you know these cost less than a buck and it protects my camera if a sudden rain shower comes up you know, and they do. Um, sometimes I carry a little uh, Fenix flashlight. I use it on rare occasions just to put a little tiny bit of light. Sometimes on a subject, more, but more often from behind on a leaf or something so, so that it's kind of like a, you know, a, a backlit screen. It's, you know, it can get a great effect with it. And it's hard to hold this flashlight and then do all the work that I have to do to stack focus. So sometimes I use the flower pod to actually hold the flashlight. Now something that I carry that maybe you don't need but are knee protectors. They cost almost nothing and they're extremely light. And they save my kneecaps when I'm on rocks or twigs or wet spots when it's really wet and rocky, which is like most of the time. They're made of foam and they're very handy to have. I can put them, stuff them in my kit, but I usually just strap them on if I'm gonna be in rough areas. I hardly notice them anymore, and they're just like totally kind to my kneecaps. Now, as far as lenses, I don't carry a lot of lenses with me. Sometimes I carry a bunch in the car, but most of the time, even then, they just sit there. I carry one or two lenses. I'm a great believer in get to know one lens really well and you'll be far on the way to, to using any lens once you know one. So I tend to carry one solid macro lens, typically something like the uh, Voigtlander 125 APO uh, Lanther. If I carry a second lens, it'll be a wide angle lens that's very fast and sharp. Like um, my favorite one, I guess right now is the Leica 60 millimeter uh, macro lens that I've converted to Nikon mount. If you have those two lenses, you've got everything you need, or at least I do. I also carry a, a bunch of stuff in my car, too much, and uh, you know, it fills up the back seat and eventually the hatchback trunk, and uh, I don't weed it out and it gets really dirty. I have hip boots back there and so forth. I don't carry often too many lenses in the car, sometimes. Now, um, I, don't, I, I no longer enjoy all-day photo trips or big hikes. It's not because I'm getting older. I mean, I can still trek it. But more because my eye for seeing natural beauty usually lasts about two hours and then gets tired. I just stop seeing things that I want to photograph, or worse, I stop photographing things because I'm tired. I, perhaps I'm just getting old, but in the car, I usually carry, carry the following things, and we just might go over those. 
I, I will tend to carry an extra tripod for wet work if it's like early spring or sometime I know the frogs are in the ponds and stuff like that. Um, this is once in a while. In that case, I will also carry a pair of hip boots, which I tend to use a lot when I'm just in wet stuff. Then I may or may not carry a, you know, maybe 30 inch or 40 inch square light tent if there's a lot of wind. And of course I have all of the coats and hats and pullovers and they're just forever there. You know, you know I don't know how many, you know, watch, watch hats I have, watch stocking caps, but I got a ton of them back there. Then there are maps, water, and sometimes food, but not very often. I usually go out for a, an hour or two, and that's it. I may go out two or three times a day, but um, I'm done after about two hours and ready to do some post-processing or something else. Now, I've talked about wind in another part of this tutorial, so I won't go into it in great detail, but I will just say that since I live here in central Michigan, northern Michigan, and it's completely flat, basically, uh, wind is almost a constant. And this is great for fresh air, but, but it's kind of tough on macro photographers, especially if they want to stack focus. Like it's one thing to wait for the wind to die down for one second and then take a single snapshot. Quite another thing to wait for the wind to die down long enough to focus and shoot 15 or 20 shots with no movement of any kind. Because the scarcity of calm around here, because of it, I tend to keep my eye on the weather channel as it regards wind speed all the time. I mean, typically there is sometimes a period of calm around, often around dawn or just after, with the wind starting to pick up as the sun rises and starts to, you know, stir up wind currents and rising currents and heat the day. Often that time of dawn, it's the time for me to get outside and photograph because the wind is, if the wind is above four or five miles an hour, I might, might as well forget stacking photos and just turn to single shot images for a while. Of course, I can't wait forever. So sometimes I carry a little light tent with me, although it's a huge pain to lug it through the woods. However, it, it does a decent job and it shuts out the wind. Since I need to have my photography fix almost daily, I have been doing a little more lately in my makeshift studio, and, uh, and I'm planning on doing more yet. I have a really large studio that's about a block from where I live, but I'll be darned if I ever will walk down there and use it. Instead, I use a, a tiny little room uh, that I make do. So anyway, that's just me. I've spent a fair amount of time trying to figure out different ways to help me hold uh, diffusers in the field or, or be able to tie back plants and stuff so to get a clear shot. Um, you know, there's not much that, and I have a lot of things that I tried and they're no good, but a really intelligently thought out product is the flower pod. It's a kind of a, it's a telescoping mini tripod and on the top of which is a sh very short articulated arm that can hold diffusers, etc. It not only can hold things up, but you can hang heavier things from it. I use it just all the time to support larger items like even 22 inch diffusers and I, you can also lean larger reflectors against this little flower pod. And then you can secure them with a small articulated arm from above. I have two of these little flower pods and uh, I'm gonna give you the URL where you can find them. It's totally worth the money and it's totally useful and it's very, very light. This little flower pod can go from six inches to 45 inches high and then the arm on top of that so it's just totally useful so you might want to check it out. I don't know about you but I find the process of doing the very careful careful work that's needed for focus stacking really does something to my mind. Um, just looking through the lenses at something you know at, at a tiny flower or a tiny little uh, woodland scene 
the mere act of looking clearly into this micro, this macro world, somehow it, it transports me into a state of mind that I seem to need on almost a daily basis. And an hour or so of shooting close up, shooting photos somehow allows me to get my mind right for the day. This the sense of clearly seeing is why I am a close-up photographer. It's not about the photos that result, the photos that I take, but it's about the process and the state of the mind when I take the photos that captures me. I mean, it's totally addictive. If I don't photograph something each day, if I don't spend some time peering through a perfect lens at something really beautiful, something pristine every day, I, I am at a kind of loss. I seem to have lost something. So that's just my two cents.